what we have here is a member of the family of laptops that once ruled laptops. There was no better laptop than an IBM ThinkPad. They were the best in a variety of, for a variety of reasons. They were the most innovative. They were the strongest. They were the best looking. And they were just uber cool. I mean, they had some of the some of the best materials um, of any laptop maker in the world. Unfortunately those days are over when IBM ditched the uh, portable computing market and sold it all to Lenovo things haven't been the same. Most notably this really awesome IBM ThinkPad logo with the tricolor letters. Um, I miss those days, I really do. Um, in fact if IBM was still making ThinkPads I'd, I'd actually buy one. But now that they're owned and operated by a company that doesn't really care as much, um, you know, I, I just don't, uh, I don't see myself ever buying one. But this is a laptop that was made around 2000 or 2001. This is the IBM ThinkPad A22e. This is one of the smaller ones. Um, you can tell because it only has one drive bay. Or making it a, a two spindle laptop. It has a CD ROM drive and a hard drive, uh, but there's no um, optic, there's no uh, floppy drive bay internally, so it's one of the more compact versions. It is a beautiful laptop, even to this day. I, I, I think that uh, you know, the industrial design department at IBM really knew what they were doing. They knew how to make a laptop look like it belonged in a Warriors attache case. Um, they were black before black was cool. Um, they were the first laptop with the AccuPoint pointing device, which personally I prefer over a trackpad, but it's more of a personal preference thing. Later models, and even current models, um, have both pointing devices, a trackpad and an AccuPoint. IBM was the very first laptop maker to have a keyboard light. Um, they've had this feature since, um, you know, I really don't know when they started doing that, uh, but it wasn't until like the late 90s. But if you hit function page up, and it turns on a little LED. Some are white, some are orange, depending on the model. And believe it or not, it really does work. It actually makes seeing the keyboard a little bit easier in dark situations. Um, of course, Apple went up them when they came out with their backlit keyboard. And up one, one up them even further when they started putting it on their 13-inch MacBooks, uh, the higher-end models. But anyway, before Apple was the king of portable, it was IBM. Before it was IBM, it was Zenith. Uh, at least that's uh, from from my own personal history of computing. Zenith was actually one of the most innovative portable makers. Um, one of the most, not the most, uh, for some of their designs in the 80s. The IBM ThinkPad line started, I believe, in 1989 or 90, um, when they came out with their first one. I believe it was the PS Note. And it was like, it was black, and it was like that thick. They never made a white ThinkPad. They were always black, except for the, um, the IBM PC convertible, which was beige. And the piece, the PS2 portables, um, the big suitcase-looking ones, those are white, too. Back to this one. Um, this is an A22e. It is in pretty rough condition. I have done a lot of work to this so far. Um, I got this from a pallet of junk that was given to my employer um, from a company that went out of business. I won't say which company, because... It was really part of the part of the agreement. Um, this is unfortunately one that we couldn't use at work uh, because it's just simply too old. It's a Pentium three, I believe it's an eight fifty. Let's do a quick about this uh, machine here. This is a I'm sorry, it's a seven hundred Pentium three. Okay. So 693 is what it comes up as. 
It has 256 megs of RAM. I tried upgrading it to uh, 512, but it wouldn't accept my 256 meg modules um, for whatever reason. So I'm going to probably try another set of modules, and if that doesn't work, then I'll just uh, leave it the way it is. It does have a built-in DVD-ROM. Yes, a DVD-ROM. I uh, originally had a CD-ROM, but that drive didn't work. So I there was another laptop in the in the pile. It was a um, a slightly newer model. It was a Pentium 3, I believe it was an, a 1000 or an 800, and it was in even worse condition. So I took the drive out of it. I took the um, a couple of screws and other bits of hardware, and one of the rubber feet. I took that off too. So I made this one a little bit nicer. Um, I was going to start swapping out keycaps because these are obviously worn beyond belief. Um, but I, they were not compatible with each other. This is a brand new AccuPoint cover. This is the dished, well, the dished version. I love these. They're very, very nice on the fingertips. Um, originally had a cat's tongue style, um, which over time can really cause um, finger pain. <clears throat> It's basically a round dome covered in what looks like asbestos fibers or something. <laughs> it's just really nasty. Or fiberglass or something. Um, the only physical defect on this laptop as of right now is both latches are busted off. But there are no visual, visible cracks anywhere else or any other scuffs or scrapes. It's actually in pretty good shape um, physically. It was obviously used fairly heavily. Um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not, you know, uh, <clears throat> one that was used lightly. But anyway, we've got, on this side, we have just the optical drive, which is easily removed. Um, I do have the floppy drive option for it as well. Um, that was, um, that was actually included in the lot. I, I had the floppy drive in its original case. And on the other side, we have our audio ports. Hard drive is right inside here. This is not the original screw, but um, I got this without a hard drive. I had to supplement one of my own 30 gigabyte drives, which is big enough for what I need it for. Um, this did originally ship with Windows 98 Second Edition, um, so it was probably one of the last Windows 98 IBM ThinkPads, because the manufacturing date, I believe, was in... Um, June of 2001 so um, it's a uh, little new to have Windows 98 um, but the I believe it had a design for Windows 2000 on it logo there it is yeah, so it was designed to be used with Windows 2000 um, not Windows XP so it was like kind of in that funky period where there were three OS's available to you you can pick any one you wanted um, it does have an optional docking station, and I thought I grabbed the right docking station, but it was the wrong one. Um, here's the, uh, no, that's not the Kensington lock port I thought it was. And on the back, of course we got VGA out, parallel 25 pin and 9 pin serial, built-in modem, built-in LAN, and only one USB port. There's the Kensington lock port. I don't understand why it only has one USB port, being the age it is, but, you know. Um, of course, it has two PCM CIA Type 1 slots, or Type 2 slots, or one Type 3. Currently being occupied by my Linksys 80211 and wireless card. It browses the web pretty well. Um, I didn't bother putting Firefox on it yet. Um, but the reason it's sitting here at my house is because I'm going to be using this as a music station. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually share my MacBook Pro's library with it. Um, so that way I can just uh, you know, play whatever I want on my home stereo. Or uh, the other option is use internet radio as a primary means of music content delivery. So I will now demonstrate that for you. Turn the stereo on. Um, this one actually sounds better than the Dell that I had here previously. I had a Dell Latitude 
that uh, was being used for the same purpose. A little bit of history on my own. I um, When I worked for an electronics um, scrapper, or actually, the company took, um, you know, boxes and pallets of used electronic junk, printers, laptops, computers, all that stuff, and we would turn it into a sellable product. Well, one time we got a whole pile of um, IBM ThinkPad 760XL laptops. The 760XL had a raisable keyboard. The only laptop I've ever seen that had this option. When you open the when you open the screen, the keyboard would flip up slightly at an angle, making it a, giving it a really nice typing angle. And I really wanted one of those. Uh, back in those days, a laptop that was about five years old, like that one, um, would have sold for about five hundred bucks, you know, or maybe even more. Laptops were expensive back then. People don't seem to understand that laptops are cheap now. So they complain about laptops that cost 500 or more. But back in those days, a used clunker was $500 or more. So I had to go through this whole pile of laptops, pick them each, and each and every one of them had to be torn apart because they all had different problems and I had to build my own, and I still paid 475 for it. Um, I missed that laptop dearly. I ended up trading it for a Pentium 3 desktop. And uh, <clears throat> I haven't been able to find a good one since. But that was a Pentium 166 MMX, if I recall. So, we're going to go ahead and launch a uh, radio station here. And we are, of course, browsing the web over a, um, or connecting to the internet over a wireless N card here. I haven't really tested the battery life of this laptop yet, but I believe it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to do that in a minute. It's playing. Here we go. It's still pretty slow. Remember, this is a 700 megahertz Pentium 3. <laughs> so, it takes a little bit. And, and iTunes is a bloated horse. So, you know, it's got a lot of crap that you don't need, such as ping, which I need to turn off. I can do that right now. I can hear my neighbor playing this mainstream rock garbage. He tends to blast it loudly, so screw him. Turn off ping, turn off DJ, genius, TV shows, and movies. There we go. Let's see how that works out. Is it playing or what? Let's try that again. There we go. Now it's rebuffering. There we go. Sounds pretty good. It sounds clear. About as clear as you're going to get. Um, but it does the job and it does it well and uh, everything works and it's in pretty good physical shape so what more could I ask for I did clean it up a little bit um, it was absolutely nasty um, I could use another cleaning in fact I might even disassemble the whole thing and clean it over again did I lose the stream? I think the song just ended yeah it did but anyway <clears throat> there you go the ThinkPad A22E. And uh, like typical IBM ThinkPads, it has those funky shaped caps lock and num lock indicators. And uh, there you go. Volume controls. That don't work. I think I need to install a driver to make them work. The U button works. Weird. Oh no, they work. All right, never mind then. Yeah, they do work. Okay, cool. Even better. <laughs>